Uh, thank you. And just to reiterate, as we close this hearing today, I think it's important to, for all of us to remember why we're here. And we are here to deal with the rise of white nationalism, to deal with the rise of violent, hateful crimes. And I truly um, respect Mr. Abu Salah for coming here and honor your children from that hateful incident back in 2015. Ms. Eileen Hershenoff, and can you just describe very briefly so that everybody understands in the simplest form, what is nas white nationalism? White nationalism is one of the many euphemisms for white supremacy. The core ideology of white supremacy now used to be before the civil rights movement to be to re, uh, keep the dominance of the white race. Now it's fear of the imminent genocide of the white race by a flood of non-whites and other people whom they consider degenerates, which they say are, uh, that flood is orchestrated by Jews as parasitic puppeteers. So thank you. You know, I'm an immigrant from Ecuador. So would white nationalists perceive me as a threat? As an immigrant, as somebody from a, uh, as a Latina, a Latinx, uh, yes, uh, that is the dominant ideology. And my husband is Jewish. Would he be perceived as a threat? He would be perceived as some omnipotent, parasitic force uh, loyal only to his own race and a, a threat to the white race. And my children who were born in this incredible nation, but whose parents are a mix of Latino and Jewish, would they be perceived as a threat? Yes, uh, what they consider mis miscegenation, whether that is African American and white or something else, uh, they would be. And as having parents, both of whom are from communities that they demean and dehumanize, yes, they would. And have you heard of the group The Proud Boys? Yes. Okay. I was a victim of an act of hate from The Proud Boys a few months ago. I was uh, visiting the office of one of my now colleagues, Representative Donna Shalala, in Miami. The chairman of the Miami Republican Party, along with the Proud Boys, organized a hate rally where we had to be placed in lockdown because they were banging at the doors, screaming profanities that I can't repeat in public. And we had to call the law enforcement officers. We had to wait there for a few hours. It was definitely um, a very threatening and fearful experience for me. And one of the first times that I actually experienced it firsthand, uh, at what we're dealing with in this country, thankfully, nothing happened to any of us. Thankfully, law enforcement came right away. What do you think the consequence should be to these type of groups? Um, I think that the laws, the, the kind of tracking and the laws on the book, as Dr. Abu Salah said, are, need to be enhanced. Um, there's a number of different things. Ms. Clark has talked about education, but, uh, and I know there's federal legislation to enhance uh, uh, hate, cr uh, hate crime laws. In the, a lot of uh, crimes are state laws, and a lot of this starts online with real life consequences, and no state has an anti-doxing law. Very few have anti-stalking or anti-swatting. So we need hate crime online and enhanced hate crime laws. I, I agree fully because I can tell you that it was through Facebook that they got this rally organized. Um, and I can tell you also that I have done my research and there are still videos from the Proud Boys that are still trending online through various forms, one of them YouTube. And so Ms. Clark, just to finish off, Facebook has said that they remove white supremacist content as soon as they're aware of it. From the Lawyers Committee's experience, is that accurate? We're uh, very pleased that after many months, Facebook abandoned this ill-conceived and flawed policy of giving white, separate, su white supremacist activity the okay, and um, uh, or, or banning white supremacist activity, but giving white nationalists and white separatist um, activity the, the red light. 
Um, I will say that for several months, we've flagged pages like the Nationalist Agenda page on Facebook, and it's okay to be white. And these are pages that are still up today as this hearing is taking place. We realize that it, uh, the hard work lies ahead as Facebook implements this policy, but no doubt tech companies must step up uh, if we're going to ever uh, combat the hate crime crisis today because online hate is so pervasive and widespread. Yes, and as Ms. Walden stated earlier, she was uh, concerned of aggressive oversight. I think that we have to work together as Congress members, as heads of companies that are actually spreading this. I know it's extremely difficult to control, but we have to do better than this because we can't allow this hateful rhetoric to spread. Thank you so much.